Hi there guys, it's Aaron here from Console Deals back again, but with something absolutely different and unique for you. So we've done reviews in the past, we've done unboxings. One of the man responsible, one of the people responsible for one of those unboxings is none other than Ryan Brown, who I am uh, happy to be joined by today. So you might know Ryan uh, as being, as handling all the PR over at Super Rare Games, or just that guy on Twitter that seems to know everything and keeps you update on all things gaming news related. But uh, yeah, welcome to the Console Deals YouTube channel, Ryan. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. It's good to be right here in the YouTubes. Yeah, I can There's see. There's a curvy it's... statue behind me. Oh, it does look very curvy. It's nice to know that Harry Potter lent, lent, uh, rented out his uh, under the stairs cupboard for you just for this meeting. That's all. Exactly. Yeah, it's real kind of him. Nice guy. <laughs> nice guy. Cool. So yeah, I thought we'd get you onto the channel just to discuss all things physical games because uh, you know, as everybody who's familiar with you will know, you're a bit of the physical games connoisseur. So mm. we at Console Deals obviously sell a lot of physical games, compare prices for a lot of physical games, and it's something we're passionate about as well. So we're crossing the streams. So um, before we get too into it, um, give us a brief overview about Super Rare Games and what it does. Yeah, sure. Um, so Super Rare Games is a rare print publisher uh, that releases a new game for the Nintendo Switch roughly every three weeks at the moment. Uh, when I say rare print, what I mean is usually those games are roughly 3,000 to 5,000 copies per game. Uh, some of our recent games include Eater, Project Warlock, um, Lonely Mountains Downhill. We've released games like Worms WMD and Human Fall Flat in the past. So a real variation of titles, which is very much the point. And in that physical release, you'll get obviously the game, all the content is on the cartridge. You get a full color manual, uh, some trading cards. And yeah, it's just like a collectible physical game for people that want to have these games physical. And the opportunities to these developers to have a physical release is not usually available to them on the retail space. So it's very much that if we weren't doing it or another company like us weren't doing this rare print version of these games, they would never see a physical release. And so that's very much what we focus on. Um, I think we've built up a pretty decent base of collectors and, and a following, which is awesome. Uh, it is something that we are genuinely passionate about. Um, my own my own collection back at home is <laughs> shocking. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's, it's an awesome thing to be working on is uh, preserving these games physically. Exactly, exactly. Especially as we move ever closer to the digital realm, get things like, you know, digital only consoles, which I don't know about you, sometimes makes my skin crawl, sends a shiver up my spine. Um, thinking about instances like, you know, Scott Pilgrim, where that game was, you know, stranded due to licensing and it only just recently got another release. Um, just out of curiosity, you might not have this number to hand, but how many uh, games has Super Rare been responsible for printing so far? Yeah, sure. So we're, we've got 48 under the belt. I can never remember if we've actually, um, <laughs> <laughs> because we have such a cycle, you know, with a game yeah. every three weeks. I'm always sort of doing a bit of work on the past one, doing work for the previous one and the next one. But 48, um, as I say, we, we have uh, a new one every three weeks. We've been doing this for three years. Um, we are actually, we have the prestige of being um, the most prolific European physical switch publisher. Ah. Um, just simply by, by having so many physical releases. Yeah, um, of course. Get edging ever closer to that magical 50. That's it. Oh yeah, soon it's in a month or two. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm sure you got lots of exciting things planned for that. Not that we're gonna give him. I'm not gonna get you any exclusives, guys. It's all, it's all good. Um, so yeah, physical games and super rare. I think you know. I think it's good that super rare focuses on the Nintendo Switch specifically because obviously mm. it's a platform rife with indie game releases, and I guess it lets yeah. you focus a bit more on you know delivering it to that wide audience. Um, what does your sort of day to day role involved at super rare what does an average day look like uh for ryan brown oh um so for me it's <laughs> so my my official job title is head of saying stuff which mm. is um a very dumb title and not very descriptive <laughs> but we don't want to have like for us this is a passion project for us it started that way and it still is so we don't want to be called like head of marketing and financial advisor like we don't yeah. want that we want to have like cool names where people talk to us and they feel like we're kind of not up ourselves you know um so 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 my job usually on a day-to-day -day basis is running all of our social media channels uh, running all of our communities we have a really uh yeah a really large and passionate community of collectors obviously and um and just generally dealing with all the marketing and communications so 
planning the next releases, sending sample copies to influencers, getting press releases ready and sending the press releases and getting press coverage. Uh, just trying to get as much coverage as possible because the more coverage, the more people buy a game and then we can make more unit numbers of the next one. So it benefits everyone. Um, and uh, getting approvals from developers on, on our marketing plans and social assets and all that sorts of stuff. Um, so yeah, day to day, it's, it's, it's sort of that, like social media, talking with developers, talking with influencers, I know people hate that word, influencers, <laughs> and, and press. And yeah, just trying to generally get the message out there. super rare out there. Saying that stuff, head of saying stuff. Mm. Yeah, I can safely That's say it. I've never met another head of saying stuff. And it sounds like it's good to have. Uh, only one in the world. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it sounds like, you know, no, no one day is the same. And um, it's pretty cool that you get to talk. A lot of your time is spent actually speaking uh, to these developers. Um, obviously you're, you're really passionate about games preservation i just wondered like because i know even before you started working at super rare that had always been like an important aspect to you and i feel like not a day goes by on twitter where you haven't uh treated yourself to something obscure and physical um where yeah. did that sort of like begin for you have you always obviously we all grew up buying physical games but when did you come to realize that the tide might be changing and that you kind of wanted to go against it yeah so for me it's just that when I think about how important video games are to me, uh, I do not view video games as being a one-off, temporary, throwaway, disposable piece of entertainment. It just isn't that for me. Like, if I play a video game, that has some degree of permanence to me. Like, that that is important to me. And I want to know that in 20, 30, 40 years' time, that I want to be able to go back to that game. I might not, but I want to be able to know <laughs> that I could. Um, and just the sort of the memories of the games I grew up with and and stuff from when I was a kid I just think in general really I'm just very nostalgic and very sentimental person I think that really feeds into a lot of uh, the things that I focus on in regards to physical media and stuff and so having that sort of focus where I'm very sentimental about things um, about the games I grew up with and, and stuff I just don't want to lose those experiences and it's not that I'm against digital gaming I'm obviously fully aware of, of the conveniences of it. It's not like I never buy games digitally. Of course I do. <laughs> but, if I, but if I enjoy a game and want it, I want it in my hands. And there's something so different about ownership-wise, like actually holding something. If I play a game digitally, I don't feel like I own it. I don't feel like it has any personal significance to me beyond the experience I've had. It, it's not mine. It's hard to kind of quantify that, but it's just like, it doesn't feel like I have any ownership of it. And for someone like me that clicks figurines and games and stuff, I need, I need to have that feeling. So, I, so having something in my hands is very different to me than playing something digitally. That, that's mine and I can finish it and then I can pop it on a shelf and it's there. Um, and yeah, I can't really remember a moment where that became a focal point for me. Um, I think it's just something I've always been interested in. Like even before digital gaming was a thing and I had to worry about these topics, like my yeah. favorite games, I'd like in my room as a kid I like pop up on a shelf and like make a whole display of my favorite game of that moment so I always made like a thing of it being physical um and I've kind of just had to adapt to the growing digital demand I suppose yeah I know exactly what you mean in terms of like holding something in your hands and feeling that it's, it's yours because how many times have we played a game digitally deleted it off our dashboard then almost forgot that we've got access to it um, yeah, and especially with stuff like PlayStation Plus and all new games with gold, games that get given away, it's so easy to forget the games that you own. But now nah, we'll always be here for the physical releases. And I don't know if do you, you might have a different, a better, uh, more respectable friendship group than me. But I know I'm the one in my friendship group that buys the you know $150 collector's edition for a game I really love, and other people don't really quite understand it. But I like looking at a statue and thinking like I played as that person, I lived their adventure. So, yeah, it's obviously the same for you, I'd imagine. Oh, actually, like, usually, to me, what usually matters is simply just having a physical version of a game. Okay. Like, generally speaking, I won't end up buying sort of the steelbook versions and collector's editions. I, ho I wholly understand that. Like, I get it mm. 100%. And we, we do that ourselves at Super Rare. We publish those kind of stuff. But personally, it's usually just about making sure I have a copy of the game physically. Um, separate to that, I collect video game merchandise. <laughs> so if there is a collector's edition that does happen to have like a statue or something that I want to put in one of my cabinets, then um, then I might get it. Um, but those two things are like almost very separate to me in my head. 
Like, I'm not too worried about having boxed collector's editions. Like, for, for me, it's because I have so many games and so many figurines. Mm. Space is an issue for me. So it's just about, okay, if I can just have, like, a thin game case on a shelf, that's good enough. There you go. I, this might be a pretty controversial question now, but are you one of those people that used to... I, I went to university, and a friend of mine would always buy a game, throw away the case, and then have just, like, a big sort of like file of facts of putting the discs in is that you or do you prefer to oh my goodness <laughs> that makes sacrilegious yeah yeah um so I'm one, I'm one of those people that has taken it even further than that in which I'm upset and disappointed and disgusted with my younger self <laughs> for throwing away the cardboard Game Boy boxes when I was a kid yeah um a thing for me recently is going back and buying Game Boy games and Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance games that I grew up with simply because I don't have the boxes anymore and I want them boxed um, yeah, for me, like, I, I, I kind of get the idea of people that would fill up like a case worth of CDs because I've had many of them. I know, although they're back in the piss one days, but they'll throw away the cases, pop them in like some sort of file effects thing. Um, I get it. I guess that's convenient. But if you can do that, you may as well just have digital copies. <laughs> like for yeah. me, it's like I can't imagine not wanting to display the games, um, the cases, the artwork, sort of the history of the packaging in itself. Like all of that is kind of in tandem for me um exactly ds recently, games as well like ds is another thing i've been getting into collecting recently going back and collecting old ds games like just picking this one up recently having a bit of a zelda binge and uh yeah. I, I, I suddenly found myself shocked that there was just a full color booklet that i could look through <laughs> inside and it was just yeah. more stuff than the health and safety information yeah you you always forget go, go, going back to my pr spiel um that that is why <laughs> at super games like every release we have has a full color manual because like we love those and there's like a bit in the nintendo switch cases for them so they should have them yeah um for everyone we do has them and also we make sure that the inlay art so the reverse art on the inside of the cover um has its own artwork as well because too often that's just like plain white and mm. it's like a bit of a shame because we could do cool stuff with that well that's a pretty good question then so who necessarily writes the uh included booklet in a lot of super rare games releases is it usually one of the developers they'll have they might have like a writer on staff or someone responsible for the story of the game or does that, that fall to you to help out yeah so officially i suppose it lies on um the, our head of our head of colors um <laughs> uh, is uh he is Stu. he is responsible for doing sort of all the art assets and any goodies that are in collect editions and manuals and stuff our sort of ethos really is that a lot of the games we publish have kind of had their day digitally like the developer is has usually moved on to a new project and is busy and doesn't really want to look back we kind of just step in as sort of a do you want a cash boost and do you want a physical <laughs> release of your game and the cash will help you fund your next game and it's sort of like wow amazing i get to hold my game and also some money for to fund my next one and so we try not to have them have to do too much like we don't want them to have to do too much work uh, most of the work is on our end um, however, they are developers um, because they're passionate, especially that's the case in the indie scene. They care deeply about their games, so usually they do get involved in all those extra goodies, um, writing the content for the manuals and putting little notes in them and sorting out what, what they want the trading cards to look like and the artwork. And So usually they do get involved in, in all those sorts of things just through pure passion. And uh, Yeah, there's some really awesome stuff has come out of it. Like We, have, we had... Um, Again, falling into, we don't want that much work to lie on the developers. We usually just use pre-existing artwork for the covers and stuff. Um, the one example is for Ghost of a Tail, which we released at the tail end of last year, tail end. Um, <laughs> we, uh, the artist created the uh, original artwork for the cover, like the original artist, which is really awesome. Oh, amazing. Stuff like that. Um, so yeah, yeah, usually developers get involved in some form or another in, in the manual and the contents of the releases. No, that's cool. And um, yeah, even better. I love the idea of, you know, there's nothing that you necessarily need to do. We'll do all the heavy lifting, but it'll help you fund your next project. So everyone's yeah. everyone's a winner in this scenario, which is rare these days, I tend to find. Yeah. So sticking with the super rare train, um, you've obviously worked on so many uh, print releases uh, since you've been there. My favorite has obviously been the one you sent me, the Steam World Heist slash Steam World Dig combo pack, Steam World Heist. Well, all the all the steam world games are just cracking but steam world high specifically one of my faves um what's been your most favorite game uh, to work on i'm sure you ask this all the time yeah <clears throat> um so i always like it if i've already finished a game personally before we publish it 
Uh, of course, before we sign games, George Perkins, the, the the founder, will play the games. So you know, we're not just like picking them. <laughs> it's probably a good practice. Air. <laughs> yeah, but, but on my end, I always like it if a game is coming out that I'm about to start doing the marketing side of stuff on, and I have already finished it. And that's happened like twice this year already. So I'd already finished Beta, and I'd already finished Project Warlock last year before they've been finalized. Um, so that was really awesome, especially for Project Warlock. Like, I, I love that game. Um, it's like a retro first person shooter. Um, I'm into all those kind of like boomer shooter games. So it was awesome to have a physical release of that. That was my favorite one, really, of the, of the recently. My overall favorite Super Rare release, because I've not been with the company since the start. I, I only joined last May. My overall favorite Super Rare release is probably um, uh, Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time or Snake Pass. Even before I worked here, I actually, because um, I've been collecting Super Rare games before I joined, um, I actually purchased Snake Pass and then sent it to the developers and got my copy signed. Um, if I had known I was going to join here, I would have just, <laughs> waited and and and, and, and yeah. sorted something out on that end but um but yeah like that's um there's there's been some really awesome releases um again i was i was into super rare stuff before i even joined um, so is that yeah, sumo of... digital uh, behind snake pass yeah yeah that's yeah, right sumo, I, yeah. i've still yet to like play a, that game it's really good it's it's uh, i really like the um i really like that smaller like the smaller indie scene which is like the jams like the indie jams and then and, and those sort of freeware scenes and and sumo do this really cool thing where they have these internal game jams but they just come up with cool ideas and um and i'm sure usually don't really go anywhere it's just kind of like a staff exercise but that one started off as that it was just like this random like in-game jam and they decided to expand it and i really like that and i wish more developers sort of had the faith in in their teams to just come up with these random kooky ideas and ex and put money in and expand them. Uh, I really like yeah. that. I like I, I like original ideas. Like I like variety in my video games. Um, I think double so but double fine are, are another developer known for doing game jams, aren't they? They're just yeah. encouraging. Yeah, developers go away and create something. And Snake Pass in particular is probably a good uh, game to own physically through Super Rare because I remember when I first bought my Switch and there was probably oh you wouldn't have got that maybe a max of like fifteen games on the eShop and Snake Pass was one yeah. of them. And that game got yeah. like so much press because it was one of the few games playable. Um, yeah. So yeah, and then you go swoop along to you know give it a bit more press and give it a bit of a second wind, which is fantastic. Yeah, we've taken a few of those sort of like early Switch titles, um, which is good. Uh, we did Graceful Explosion Machine as well, which was another one of those games that kind of came out in the month that the Switch came out, where there was just like if if a game came out, everyone's like amazing, and everyone played it and talked about <laughs> it. Um, yeah. And yeah, so it's been really good to kind of catch some of those early Switch titles physically. Um, so generally speaking, we try to go for variety. Like we don't want to be known as the puzzle platformer company or the first person shooter company. Like we we kind of have it in mind that if you're not interested in one release, don't worry about it. You might like the next one. And so we try to have it so that um, we even try it to, to, to the point where we try not to release like the same genre games in, in concession. Like we don't want oh puzzle platform and then the puzzle platformer we really try and vary the whole game lineup for the year to the point that when we look at what we have planned for the rest of the year we go what kind of genre is missing here like what kind of thing do we need to slot in so variety is a big thing for us um and then for picking when, we, when we're picking games like we don't really have like a specific art style or specific like type of game um that we're looking for really it's just the way that we end up s sort of picking which games to, to sign is is a, if we liked it. And sometimes it is that simple. Um, George Perkins, the founder, like played uh, Old School Musical as an example, one of the games we released. And that's not a very well-known game. It wasn't very well-known. It probably hadn't been highly requested beforehand. But he loved it and was like, I want a physical release of this. So we did it. <laughs> and sometimes it's just that easy. Some, that's, that's the joy of this being a passion project. It's like, well, I want it. So we're going to do it. Um, and lo and behold, that ended up meaning that lots of new people discovered that game and enjoyed it, which is awesome. Um, so that's one way is just that we, if we want them. Uh, another is of course that developers will end up pitching to us and we'll kind of like decide whether that looks any good. Or we'll just have recommendations from our audiences on Twitter and Discord and stuff. Um, we take those recommendations so seriously that I literally have a tally sheet. I have a spreadsheet that I use a tally whenever anyone goes, can you do this please? Tick. I tick the game off in the tally. <laughs> so every time anyone suggests something, it's literally added to a tally. Um, so we know at all times which games are the most requested for physical releases. It doesn't mean so it can a, happen. 
That's a bit there's of a like top tip reasons. then. If there's a yeah. game you're waiting on that Super oh, yeah. hasn't got to mention it, tag Ryan and Super Rare and it might happen. 100%. Yeah, one hundred percent. Like we we want to know what people want because that's the point, right? Like if there's a game exactly. that that thousands of people that we don't know about are sitting going, oh, I wish I had a physical release. We really would love to know that. Like we would love people to come and tell us. It doesn't mean it can happen all the time because sometimes developers, you know, sometimes developers just have, have have moved on to the point that even the small amount of, you know, like signing contracts and discussion for a previous game, they just don't want to do it sometimes, and that's that's okay. Um, or sometimes, you know, they might have other publishing plans. So it doesn't mean that every game is possible, obviously, but we do try and look at all those suggestions. And so, yeah, that's that's how they're picked, really. It is kind of like a very... And then all the boring stuff, like data and seeing whether it makes sense financially for, for both yeah. partners and all that stuff. Um, so, yeah, a variety of ways, really, in which we choose them. And um, obviously, the reason why you're called Super Rare Games is because you only print uh, these in... <clears throat> excuse me in limited quantities is it um is it five thousand for your average game am i right in thinking that probably about average yeah it's like four to six thousand usually yeah and what are your top tips say there's a game because i know super rare is obviously very active on social media you always reveal your games um in good time ahead of time what what would be your top tips for if i if a game's coming up that i really want and i want to make sure that i get one of those limited com copies what sort of processes would you recommend Sure. So, I mean, first of all is like, this sounds very pitchy, but you could, you can sign up to our <laughs> news now so that you'll get emails way in advance to when games are coming out and reveals and stuff. But you can get them on our social media accounts as well anyway, of course, um, at Super Rare Games. Um, generally speaking, our release schedules is very uh, formulaic intentionally so that it doesn't just, you know, it's not like Tuesday one week, Wednesday the next week. It's always a Thursday at 6 p.m. GMT when our games go on sale. So if you've seen a reveal, um, which is usually the week prior, usually the Friday prior, then you know, oh, the game is going on sale next week, Thursday 6 p.m. Um, that's kind of just how it works. It's a very formulaic date. Um, there's no reason for it to be Thursday, by the way. That's just, it's just <laughs> Thursday now. Um, there's no particular reason for it. Um, but it just means, you know, we've done it. We may as well stick to it so people know when to expect it. And generally speaking, like, I feel that people don't realize the reason that we have these rare print editions, the reason we print 4,000 and not just 500,000 is not because we want to sort of restrict the number of people that, that get it. We want it to be rare for the sake of it. It's because that sadly is usually the demand. Um, these games do not have retail opportunities, generally speaking. Um, when we say we're making 5,000, 6,000 copies of a game, that's usually the amount of people that want to actually buy that game. Um, yeah. I think maybe only once or twice we've ever sold out on day one. Like usually we'll sell out over the course of a week, which we think is good because that kind of means, okay, people are having time to find it and get it at their own pace and not have to rush too much. So that's kind of ideal for us. I mean, if we view it that if, if we did have a game that goes on sale and it sells out in an hour, we've kind of misjudged the demand. Like that's, I mean, great, we've sold out, I guess, but, <laughs> but we want everyone that has, everyone that wants a game to have it. Like we, like, you know, there's no, we, we're not saying, well, we only want to make 5,000 for the fun of it. If there's 8,000 people that want a game, fantastic. <laughs> we're more than happy to make 8,000. Um, so yeah, it's, 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 it's not great if a game sells out immediately. We never had anything sell in like minutes, but if, but if a game did, um, that's not a good sign. Cause it means, oh dear, we've misjudged the demand. There's actually more people that want this. And of course, as we grow our audience, the unit numbers will go up. Um, so what I always tell people is if one of our games doesn't interest you, um, just consider the fact that there is a reason we've chosen that game. There is an audience out there for it and they might be new to Super Rare Games and then they might buy the next games, which means we're building an audience, which means we can make more units. Um, so that's that's always a good thing, building on the audience. Um, yeah, tips in general, if, if you're after one of our games and don't want to miss out, just follow us on social media or newsletters or something like we we're always really clear about when things are happening um yeah. and hopefully you don't miss out yeah that's really good um because i'll be honest i wasn't aware that um there'd never been an or it's very rarely that super rare games games sell out and it's good to know that you guys do enough research to kind of you don't want to you know miss <sighs> shortchange anyone i guess is the uh word i'm looking for because so many times i've been after like like a mondo poster myself it sells out within like 10 minutes and stuff it's good to know that's not the case uh for your switchers switch audience uh players 
Um, so I think we're coming to the end of the interview now, Ryan. Um, this has been a, a great chat. I just want to... One more question for you. Speaking about physical games in, in general, physical media, I say as I'm looking at my uh, 4K Blu-ray collection, um, <laughs> why are you so passionate about games preservation and what can players do to make sure that physical games never really go away? Yeah, so the reason I'm passionate... (laughs) Um, The the reason I'm passionate, and I think that everyone should be, is that these experiences that we love so much, like if if you're watching this, like chances are you love video games and care about video games, um, I hope. And so (laughs) you shouldn't want these experiences to just be lost time. Like I know that I want to be able to, in 20 years time, have kids or something and go oh but i grew up with this by the way do you want to play it and i want to be able to share those experiences that's a very human thing to want to do to be able to share experiences and although digital gaming should be a platform for us to be able to preserve games easier for various reasons like licensing and boring stuff it isn't one day the ps3 storefront is going to go down one day the ps4 storefront is going to go down one day they're all going to go down and we don't know (laughs) whether you're going to keep those games we don't know if they're going to be obtainable on other platforms in future we have no idea we have to assume that a lot of them are just going to be lost entirely and so what people can do if they want um to keep those games and uh and and keep physical games is to buy physical games (laughs) um um usually i think the split yeah, I think the split is generally about 50-50, give or take, uh, with the digital and physical sales. Um, that's kind of obviously, over the years, gone up towards digital. But we've hit a point where yeah. it kind of is plateauing a little bit. So there's clear that the demand for physical is still strong. When you look at PS5 sales, obviously, demand is difficult at the moment, as I'm sure any console deals <laughs> person knows. Um, but... Uh, the 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 um the physical version of that console has so far sold better it seems to be the more um elusive of the two and so even for people that do play digital games primarily then they don't want to lose the ability to play physical which is really interesting even the people that haven't bought a physical game in years they don't want to entirely lose that ability and the only way not to lose that ability is to tell publishers to tell console manufacturers that you you still want physical games um and the only way yeah, you can do that is by being wallet. outspoken and buying them. Yeah, always works best. I remember having this conversation, sticking with the PS5, with again a friend of mine, and he was like, should I get the, the disc version of the PS5? I was like, I can lend you Spider-Man Miles Morales, you can lend me Demon Souls. Ipso facto, we're, we're future-proofed. Yeah. Well, Ryan, this has been absolutely brilliant. I appreciate you taking the time to tell us more about all the good work that you and the rest of the team over at Super Rare Games uh, do. Um, if people want to keep up with everything Super Games, as well as yourself, where can people find you? Sure. Um, so you can find us on Twitter and all social media handles at Super Rare Games. Uh, you can check out our website at superraregames.com. Uh, where we list all the new releases. Uh, for me personally, you can find me at Toad's Anime on Twitter, where I share all the latest video game news, and you can 100% come and tell me all the games that you want to be released physically. Works well for me. Pick Ryan, we want Star Wars Republic Commando uh, as a super rare games physical release when it launches. That's what I'm going to be throwing at you. Awesome. Well, thank you for watching, guys. Uh, Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video. Drop a like down below. And until next time, happy gaming.